recording oh recording super super yeah it's what i bring it's what i have super. it's what i have uh then that closes and then you're good on volume so am i okay we're good okay here comes everybody oh okay. grab on to something because it starts in three two one This is the morning stream, but it's not in the morning, it's at night. TMS PM. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to TMS. This is TMS PM for Friday, January 17th, 2020. I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian Nibbett. Hi, Brian Nibbett. Hi. Hi, Scott Johnson. <laughs> Happy Friday to you. Happy weekend. Working on it. Working on the yeah. weekend. Yeah trying to have a good time Everybody, everybody's working on the weekend is what lover boy almost sang mm. <laughs> they almost everybody's did everybody's working on the weekend yeah they should have said four and then we would have yeah. had it exactly everybody's right he's getting over time <laughs> oh is that what that second line is i've never known yeah, yeah okay. so they're yeah they're singing about how time and a half for you oh wow <laughs> all right the working man's band lover boy i like it that's right exactly yes i like that a lot <laughs> So uh, we're back at it. We're doing a thing here. Now, uh, before we get going, uh, yeah. I've got an announcement to make. And yes. This is <laughs> this is an announcement that you may be going, ooh, ooh, they got something really cool to mention. And we do, but we it's do. maybe not in the direction people if are thinking. If you're the thinking. right per person. Yeah, if you're yeah. the right person. So let me explain. Let's go back to 2014 when we established, sure. early 2014, we established the, the oh, uh, Patreon for the show. 2014 was lovely, yes. It was a fine year. We won a uh, podcaster, uh, the, the hallowed award. Where is it? Uh, here it is. Before you had to pay for these, we won right. 2013's we won. Podcast Awards, People's Choice, The Morning Stream. Right there, see? We won the last free award. <laughs> yep. I some, and for some reason, I also got the Hall of Fame, the last Hall of Fame award as well. You I did. seem to be, I seem to be having a role in ending things. I don't know why that's happening, but <laughs> I feel kind of bad. There, about it's it. interesting you bring that up. I, 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 I've been tapped to uh, be part of uh, the new generation of the podcasting hall of fame oh there's a new generation there's a story yeah it's a longer story that really won't won't fit here on the show and we'll talk about it on uh monday or something next okay week. all right interesting i like yeah. i like the, the the goings on and the underbelly of the podcast world <laughs> anyway. it's actually a pretty cool thing but it's yes it is in the underbelly all right very under that? very under and very be very belly all right <laughs> way down by the crotch that's where it's at that's right exactly so uh back in 2014 when we established our patreon we didn't know what we were doing we were one of like the first four people or something to use patreon like we were like very early with it and uh so it was like us tom Merritt, handful of other people and um because we didn't know what we were doing, one of the things that we did was we said, hey, what if one of the unlocks, uh, once we unlock it is, uh, we'll get to a, a fifth episode a week and then we'll just do that show. Like today, like TMS PM that is happening right now in front of people's faces. And uh, and we said, yeah, that's a great idea. And then we hit that goal like super quick and we went, all right, well, I guess we're doing that fifth episode. Welcome to Friday's PM edition of the show. It's in the night, not the morning. Yay, or whatever, right? Right, little well, jazz music, little Scott Fletcher at the beginning. Yes. Yeah, a little bit of you know, little difference, little Dan here, a little last TMS PM here, a little uh, app time there, that sort of thing. And it's been great. We've enjoyed the heck out of it. But pretty quickly after that, I went, oh, the way this is supposed to work is, the patrons unlock a thing, and then the patrons get a thing. Right. We did this thing where we went, everyone gets a thing because yeah. the patrons did it for you, right? Right. We didn't make it so that the people who actually made it happen got the reward. Right. I mean, they got it, but they had to share it with all the freeloaders. Right. Right. Exactly. So then yes. what we and so we pretty quickly recognized this and went, oh, well, genie's out of the bottle. I guess we'll run it like this for a while. And it's OK. Not, not, not the genie in the tadpole. No, the no, not that, that genie. was never in the bottle. No, yeah. she's not on the bottle, in the bottle or around the bottle. <laughs> We're going to connect it to the bottle. <laughs> Unless she wants to be, no judgment. Whatever you want, Jeannie. You do what you want in that bottle. Um, anyway, and so at the time, I remember having a discussion, and I had the thought that, hey, maybe one day we'll do that again. We'll, we'll tuck it away behind the Patreon wall because that's what we mm -hmm. should have done in the first place. But 
since the cat's out of the bag, to use another metaphor, because no one's named cat in the chat room, right, uh, right. we'll go ahead and just let it ride. And we didn't know for how long. You know, in my head, I thought, well, we'll do like six months of this, and then and then we'll tuck it away. But I just let it go and let <laughs> and it go and let it go. Six months became a year, and yeah. we talked about it. So the year became two years. By the way, the cat is now in the bottle. Oh, great. Well, well done, Scott. Good, great gravy. That's yeah, bad. The cat has gotten into the bottle. So we are six years now with it out of the bottle, and now we have decided to tuck it back in. Starting next week, the, pain, the, the Patreon bonus TMSPM episode will be available in podcast form and video form to patrons only. Now, before you but, freak out and lose your we mind. We will be fully nude. Oh, yeah, we'll be fully oh, no, nude. We no, we won't be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Never shit. Mind. No. Oh, man. I've already. Oh, yeah, okay. dang it. Uh, I know. We can send the heater back. Shoot. <laughs> um, part of this is because lately I've gotten more and more questions from patrons going, that's weird that you guys did that and it's not an exclusive to us. Anyway, I'd love mm -hmm. the show. A lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. what got me thinking, oh, I should talk to Brian. We should just probably do this. We should probably pull the band aid off and write this little piece of the ship. It doesn't affect any other part of the show, which was already out there right. for the whole world for free to go. Here you go. Here it is. But PM will still be recorded on a weekly basis, will still be a chunk of content that we make here and will still involve things like Dan and apps and all the fun stuff we do for PM. Uh, but like the bonus episodes that we put up there, this will be recorded and put up there just for patrons. And it'll be part of the Patreon RSS feed thing. So you can have a separate feed if you want or and whatever. That, see, and that's the cool thing is that this Patreon RSS feed. So, you know, it's not like you have to say, okay, well, I'm getting all these shows through the regular RSS feed. And then when I want the, the good stuff, then I have to go over to Patreon and get it from there. No, you can actually subscribe to the Patreon RSS feed and uh, correct me. Boy, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes here, but I think we're talking about this. The, the regular shows will also be on that feed. So yes. someone who's a patron will get everything as opposed to having to get one thing from one place and another thing from another yeah, place. Yeah, the only downside of it is um, it really jacks my tracking up. So I'm trying to figure out how that's going to work. I think mm -hmm. I can just do the math and it'll be okay. Yeah, um, if you add A to B, then... Yeah, it should be fine. <laughs> right now, right now the number is A. <laughs> yeah, because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure a, a will give me stats so that because yes. B already does. I just need. I just kind of like having those. You know, it's a thing to yeah, have. Yeah, it's yeah, part of, of the, oh, the yeah. way the world spends. Well, advertisers need it. Well, that and just knowing how we're doing. Are we growing? Are we not? Are we? You know, that stuff matters. So Blue Chew is going to stop sending us boner pills if we don't give them uh, <laughs> extra money. P.S. Still uh, have not received any boner pills. I still. We still haven't sent Brian any boner pills to test. Yeah. I have never tried it, so I don't know. Sales geek. <laughs> yeah, sales geek. Get us some boner pills. Get Brian sales some. I'm good. good. I'm good. I've got a table that's got one leg shorter than the other. Send boner pills. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I went places I was I didn't want my imagination. So, anyways, well, I was gonna crush it and rub it on the shorter than. The no, I get it. Like, so it would grow, but in my mind, you were on the ground helping Just prop it there, up, prep, propping the table yeah, up with with a couple extra <laughs> inches. You know, laying on my back. How how short do you think this table is? <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's the plan. <laughs> um, now, here's the thing for those who are patrons. You're like, well, I'd still like to watch the live stream. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to do this because when we made this decision, it was right before YouTube decides, decided to cancel all my accounts for no reason. And I'm still in the appeals process. That could open up any day now. They may come back and say, you know what, you're right. Here's all your stuff back. I don't know. When they do, I'll use that streaming account to do a private embedded stream on Patreon, which is, which is you can do that. No one else can see it yeah. on YouTube. It's just sort of hidden. They um, actually have a built-in tool for that. We just have to figure out how to work our our streams into that so that it's not just you, you want to be looking at both of us you want to see the the, the frilly display panel and all that yeah stuff. the only thing different the only thing different should be there shouldn't be anything actually just location yeah, it shouldn't be any difference because yeah, i can exactly. right now i can connect what i use right now to go to twitch i connect to youtube no problem same thing it's the exact same process it's just mm -hmm. they banned me so, mm -hmm. so until I work that out, I don't know. But if not, I may have a secondary account set up by then. I'll, I'll figure something out. But um, we want to keep doing that. For sure, there'll be uh, <laughs> video archives. And where those go, I don't know yet. But we'll try it probably up on the Patreon site. And then people get that exclusively. Now, another just a quick reminder to everybody listening. This has zero effect on the rest of the show. And That's that right. includes, by the way, 
patron play dates, which are also Patreon focused, but those are public. You guys all can come to that and watch that. We want patrons to play and get in there and get, you know, play with us. And that's the fun of being a patron in that particular case. But the actual display of what we're doing and the gameplay and the three hour thing, that's for the world to enjoy right, publicly. Right. Okay. And, regular and we don't have a six month plan, one year plan, or a six year plan no. to take that away from you. No. That's, that yeah. is here to stay because it's so damn fun. And the more people who are around us when we do it, the more fun it is. Right. So uh, this is Scott, this is less I, about because honestly, Brian and I don't really we don't gain anything from putting it back behind the wall. But I want the patrons to get the thing that they unlock because they did it. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I feel right. I'm starting to feel bad well, that we just did it on their dime and let it let the whole world have PM. If that makes um, sense. I have a question, Scott, because, you know, I mean, there might be people out there who aren't patrons who are saying, well, surely it, it would cost me 20, maybe even $30 a month, a day, a day to get this kind of quality content. How much, how much is this extra day of content going to cost me, Scott? Well, let me tell you, if Brian. I signed up to be a patron. Gosh, I'm glad you asked because would you pay 20? Nope, too high. Would you pay 15? <laughs> Ah, too high, too high. Ten? Uh, too high, too high. I mean, I would do that because I love the morning stream. Well, of course but you would. But too high, too and high. And there would be other things you could get. We want to make that clear. There's always more that you can get. There are many flavors <laughs> that you can get, okay? However. There's different flavors that you can get. Sorry, I had to play it. Uh, <laughs> That's for the people who get the tea. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's the tea level. I still have the tea. But the tea you is. can be for just one U.S. dollar. Wait, wait, wait. One dollar a day? No, no, no. I don't know, Scott. That's still really high. Brian, there's more. One dollar a month. A month? Yeah. You know, that, the other dumb thing we did. That money falls out of my ear on a daily basis. <laughs> the other stupid thing we did when we set this up. And we're not changing that, so come take advantage of that. A dollar a month? Are you kidding me? That's insane. So all of you people that are like, oh, I'm not going to get it anymore. A dollar a month. A dollar a month. Yeah. I That's mean... It costs you less. I mean, it costs you more just to supersize your extra value meal. Yeah. I don't think that's still a thing anyway. Yeah. It costs you that much to get the, it costs you more than that to get an extra, actually, it costs you more than that to get almond milk instead of 2% in your Starbucks yeah. uh, mocha latte. Yeah. You'll spend, it's easier to, if you see a dollar on the ground, you'll save money by just walking past it. That's how low that is. <laughs> so it costs you more than a dollar to pick up a dollar. Right. So I'm just saying, <laughs> if you if you guys uh, and, and listen, we are we are, it's a weird mix here, right? Because we have yeah. people at home. The large majority are getting it on audio. A right. percentage come every day for live stuff, like these fine folks here today. A bunch of people watch the video archives. Uh, other people bounce around between these things. So it's a vast and differentiating sort of sort of audience. We don't care which one you're coming from or what your deal is. If you want to support the show, the production of the morning stream, a buck a month would make it so you keep getting PM. That's it. And then you can, you know, say, I'm a patron, even if it's for that measly dollar. So get in here and check it out. Yeah, exactly. All right. That's the end of that. Pastor Das says, for $5, they'll do TMS PM from your house. And I said, <laughs> yes, but it'll cost you $1,000 to make us leave. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or it'll cost them a thousand dollars to get here to come to my house because that's the house I'm doing it from. I'm doing it from there my you house, go. not your house. My uh, house. This is my <clears throat> house. My house. All right. So um, now moving on from that, uh, I would like to express yeah. some sadness. Uh, oh. My daughter is leaving the house tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day. Well, I don't uh, remember you being this sad when Taylor left. Well, um, <laughs> I'm that's, kidding. That's funny I'm you kidding. Because you were because of the yeah, she got married and <laughs> yeah, I was sad. And in fact, if you go back in the uh, diary of a cartoonist feed, <laughs> you will find a full, a big dedicated thing I did, which I'm in the mood to do for Carter too. But I'm sad because yeah. I don't know. It's just sad. It's just hard for me. And and she's super sad about it too. But she's excited too, and I'm excited too. And it's a great new thing for her. She got this apartment, a great roommate, a killer deal. It's right downtown where she wants to be. It's close to work. It's close to the bus and the train and all the stuff that she uses. Um, she has great internet. They have freaking Google Fiber there. So she can do all her internet-y things and stream more. And she's going to stream with me more. And uh, I don't know. She's more than just a daughter. She's like my little art pal. So yeah, I'm bummed yeah. about it. And uh, I can't say this in front of her because she cries immediately. So uh, I, have to, I have to be careful. Meanwhile, <laughs> yeah. Uh 
14 days until Tristan moves back out. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bell handy for that. That's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my shame bell. It's my cowbell. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Is he? He's moving out. I didn't. I hadn't heard this. Is this a thing? Yeah. Oh. Again. He's, okay. uh, Tristan is moving out yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> Is it him it's and his Groundhog Day? Him again. and his girlfriend find a find a place or something? Or they did, yeah. They get an apartment that is um, it's probably two miles away, close enough that we're having them over, you know, Wednesday nights for for family dinner and mm -hmm. take home some leftovers so you guys don't You'll don't uh, starve and come do your laundry here and sure. stuff like that. So. Sure, sure. And bring the cat. Bring yeah. the cat when you <laughs> when you come over for dinner. <laughs> Are you going to miss the cat? You're going to miss the cat a little bit, right? Definitely going to miss the cat. He is such a, uh, he has so much freaking personality. I mean, both of our cats do, and Ara does as well. Yeah. But he he really has zero Fs. Like, and Ara will just be sitting there, you know, like looking out the window or something, and he'll walk up to her, and you'd think he'd stop when he gets to, you know, a comfortable distance away from her, a, a couple inches. He doesn't. He just keeps going like he's a friggin' bulldozer, bo build, uh, bu bu bulldozer. bulldozer, a buildover, <laughs> a bulldozer until she is on, you know, on her side, hissing and our legs flailing and tail flapping all over the place. Just like, <laughs> just like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm not stopping. Yeah, that sounds like I gotta go over to uh, Bill Dover's house and get some truck parts. That's right. Bill Dover's exactly. got the part Bill I need. Dover. Yeah. Uh, uh, by it, the way, uh, Disturbed Angel, it's Scott's cat that's a dick. Not, uh, oh, ours not is a cat. huge dick. He's a giant yeah. dick. Deckard is. And Deckard's leaving. That's her cat. So they're going, he's going with. And you said your cat has no Fs, or that uh, the little cat has no Fs to give. This cat, mm -hmm. Deckard Kane, has mm -hmm. negative five Fs to give. <laughs> he takes he takes Fs from other people. He yeah. has that, takes that, those, Fs. that few Fs. Yeah, and somehow it gets in the negative and then gives those negative Fs. Wow. He's just wow. the worst <laughs> angry little turd. But she loves him. She, he's going with uh, the, the roommate she's got is somebody my oldest daughter went to high school with. She's an artist, but uh, total fast friends with Carter, perfect situation. It's just these two girls. Um, she's... Uh, it's just perfect. Everything about it is perfect. That's, That's right. the funny thing about all this. She's prepared. Mm -hmm. She has a bunch mm -hmm. of savings because she works hard. Uh, she's got her tuition paid for. Her schedule's done. She uh, will live near the U where she both works and goes to school. She's going to be drawing all the time. She has all the stuff she needs. Like, this is going to be the right awesome thing. But yeah. it's hard as F for me to just say, all right get out See, like i can't do it it's so hard with, for me of course yeah that makes sense and that's great you know that's i'd be i'd be surprised we'd all be surprised if it was if there was any other reaction oh, right to like it would be i can't even imagine it like the idea yeah. that that we would like phew, finally she's all right woohoo party time that you're leaving i had lunch with kim today we were with. kim and i had lunch today together well us and the dogs mm -hmm. and kim just starts crying during lunch i'm like Aww. what's the matter she goes well, i don't know i'm just not ready for her to leave and you know, yeah. so we're feeling it. It's like we work really hard to make our kids independent and strong-willed and want to do things on their own. All of them have great ambition for that. But as much as that's true and that we prepared them in this way and feel like we did our part, they have their own part, obviously, but we did mm -hmm. our part, it doesn't matter. In the end, it's still freaking hard. Now, mm -hmm. ask me, you know, if Carter suddenly, let's say six months from now, becomes the... Uh, the kid that comes home back and forth for 12 times until she's 42, well, then we'll have a different mm -hmm. discussion. It's not going to happen, though, because that's not her. She's not going to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. going to be a little hard tomorrow. So. <laughs> anyway. I didn't think Tristan was going to come back. Uh. <laughs> I know. It's just hard. Yeah. Tristan, listen, listen, that's funny in the chat room. Wait, I missed it. Someone said, oh, Trump Paul says, children leave. Scott and Kim cry. Brian throws a party. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Brian loves Tristan. He's just excited for the, you know, for it was, to stick. That's I was all. sad the first time Tristan moved out. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, part of it is, part of the joy of it is that they got it. All right, you're on your way. You don't want the exactly. ship to turn right back around. Neither do right. I. I want them to strike out and mean it, you know? So I get exactly. that. I get that. But yes. then if they need us, this is a weird time for the Gen Zs and the, and the millennials. They got less opportunity. They make less money. And, the, mm -hmm. and housing opportunities are ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. It's just different than when you and I were first married and stuff. It, just, it totally is, yeah. So exactly. I get and, that they need our help and all that. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, for Tristan, too, there was a 
bad roommate situation that was kind of the big deal and so it doesn't sound like carter's got anything to worry about with that no uh, in fact she situation. told she let it leak the other day what her savings was and I, my jaw dropped i couldn't believe it she doesn't <laughs> spend anything she's so careful with her money and wow. just socks it away and you know she because she doesn't like she doesn't drive she'd rather use public transportation she doesn't have a car payment so she doesn't have mm. any debt there's like zero debt she'll just have this rent um, she has her own insurance, and it's really good insurance because of where she is works at the U. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's just a lot of good stuff in her favor, and she recognizes this, and she's worked really hard for it. She 100% deserves this. It's going to be amazing. Cool. And we'll see them weekly like you're going to see Tristan of with the course. dinners and stuff. It's yes, fine. Exactly. And we're going to stream more together because we can actually you know coordinate better. And it, Despite her not being here, that's the funny thing. It'll actually be easier for us to coordinate art streams remotely than it mm. was when she was here because she's so much closer to where she works and school that she's mm -hmm. not commuting for tw uh, for two hours on mm -hmm. a train every day. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to be better. So anyway. Awesome. Well, very cool. Good. Moving on. Let's move on. Yeah. Sadder. On sadder. happier things, Scott. Yeah, here's a happy thing, I think. Where's my phone? There it is. App slapping. <laughs> Awesome music by Eric Van Skyhawk. Always fun to hear. It's been yeah, a while right. since we've done this because Dan has just been up our butts, man. He has been Yeah, and here. you know what? And and on the day that I'd love to be able to thank Dan in person, um, he's not here, but he sent me uh, some pancake mix. Yeah. That looks awesome from, from North Carolina. A package of uh, dice for Marvel Crisis Protocol, an extra pack of dice, and a set of the movement and range tool. It's funny, we were just talking about how with Warhammer you had to do the, get the tape measure out and measure and everything. Yeah. This is the um, movement and range tool pack. This, you know, these plastic oh. deals you can paint. They're super cool. They're like, you know, one of them has webs and another one has like psychic blasts and this is going to be so fun to, to paint to look like the appropriate hero color that it usually goes along with right do you so link like, them together or do they are they just separate measurements like um they're separate measurements but the um the three that you see here on the side yeah. are hinged in the middle so that you can like if it has to go around uh, an object or a corner or something like that then it's not like oh you know, you've got a that's great and a tape measure around it yeah it's really really cool well that's awesome the 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 one i was watching like i was saying medicine's thing it was all tape measures but I didn't realize that some of these games had their own like uh, distance markers and stuff. That's very cool. Well, now you got to paint right. that whole mess. You got to get going on. I painting. totally, yeah, I got exactly. And and somebody um, emailed me, and I had their email in front of me earlier, but I don't think I've got it in front of me anymore. Um, pointed out that it's like, yeah, you know what? You can put them together and paint them uh, once they're put together. What? What did you see? What did you see? Sorry, in the, uh... I I am I am promise I'm 100 percent listening to you, but free hotel room. Who's <laughs> <laughs> who's in bright red letters, by the way, so it's impossible to avoid him. Perfect. Says, Good. I thought the pen topic would be longer. Can we go back to that at some point? He, <laughs> you're the most sarcastic person in our chat room. We were talking about pens, and I know that's boring. I think it was even a pre-show, too, we were yeah, talking about Yeah, it wasn't pens. even on the show. I don't know what he's talking about. Because yeah. I got one of these things. <laughs> Brian talked me into getting one of these cool, although mine seems bigger than yours, like a bigger page size with less Genetics. sheets. <laughs> Blue chew, blue chew. No, because I don't want, I for my to-do list, I don't want it to be intrusive all over my desk. I want the smallest notepad they make that has, you know, that basically I can just have over here, still have plenty of desk space for my uh, my regular keyboard, my WoW keyboard. My <laughs> <laughs> all your keyboards, sure. All my keyboards. I like the... uh, I like that, actually. I kind of want a smaller one. I, would, I thought this is all they had, so I guess I didn't look very hard. Um, I thought this was it. So. Well, here's the good news. Yeah. You can get another one, and all your pens that you got will work with it. Hey. So, now we're, are you happy? Are, are you happy, happy Bob? Yeah. We're talking about the pens more. Freaking Bob, dude. <laughs> anyway, I was listening, I, and this I is fascinating. Anyway. So so give me a timeline on how soon you're going to actually play this thing, because I want to see the setup when um, you're done. I think, so yeah, so the person who talked to me said that, you know, you can put them together and then paint them after they're put together. The problem with you painting them while they're still on the the plastic webbing is that um, if you get any of the glue or if you get any of the paint on the parts that you're gonna have to glue together, it might not stick. Oh. So, um, gotcha. So put them together, take the bottom disc 
like I'll demonstrate with a stitch right when here. You say a disc is like the thing they stand on. Oh yeah, there the you go. The thing they stand on. Yeah. But here's a stitch because I don't have one of them in front of me. Yeah. And then put it on a like a, an empty pill bottle. Yeah. Um, use some of that blue tech stuff to stick it on the pill bottle, and then you've got a much bigger thing to hold uh, onto, uh, Jamie, uh, <laughs> while you paint while you paint the the top of it. Yeah. Oh, Jamie. Let that whole thing. Just take the whole thing, Jamie. Yeah. Don't edit any of that out. It's all for you. Uh, oh, Bob. Anyway, so that's what you, that's what you can do. Is uh, that's cool. Is, is glue it to the top, and I think a lot of people who do miniatures do that because the the Hero Forge painting instruction YouTube videos I was watching, which are fantastic. Yeah, they're by the really way. good. Really, really good. Um, uh, the guy who does it shows that the miniatures, you know, are stuck to the top of a piddle bottle. A piddle, a pill a piddle, bottle. A for piddle that box. Reason. A yeah. piddle bottle. I have a one of those bottle. next to my bed. If I have to pee in the night, I got a little piddle box. Oh, it's fine. Who dive like a whole six pack of piddle bottles? So hold on, this uh, heroforge dot. Oh, I love these guys. They're the ones that let you do the three D print and yeah. then paint it and stuff. Yeah. So they'll either you can buy them and they three D print them and send them to you, and they now have color. They're kickstarting a new color. I don't, I don't want to give them a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, promotion here because I'd much rather they become a sponsor. And yeah, send do me that. Stuff. Send some cool stuff. Brian would like some free things. Thank you. I'd like some cool stuff, but you can also design them there, download the STL, the STL file, and mm -hmm. then print it on your own 3D printer. And now that I've got the resin printer, I mean, I've showed you the, um, here's a miniature of the same size as the Marvel Crisis Protocol. I'm still in the process of painting it, but it's a, uh, a shield uh, assault Mm. Uh, character and, and look at that like you know you can see on the base maybe you can't but you can see on the base a holder by her head uh, that she's she's only touching the base with her toe and she's like lead all the way forward there's like all that space to where let me zoom there you go uh, right there can yep. you see right there yep I totally can there you go so and, and she stands perfectly you know she doesn't fall over anything like right. that it's the right balance or whatever because um, it's perfectly balanced but looks like she's in the process of getting ready to fly or, or run or whatever that's cool so man. they have some really cool poses and designs and stuff and with a resin printer these things look like they're out of the box off the shelf so well i'm uh pretty excited for you actually anyway i want to, I want to see it are you gonna do with app slapping are you gonna do the big table the the pool table thing that you use for other games your poker table rather is that what you're gonna yeah. use yeah 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 for sure that's okay. like the perfect gaming table for all this stuff because it has drink holder right cups come on over dave yep come that's play right. come play a tabletop game is there drinking oh. yes come on over then but I wouldn't. I wouldn't subject uh, Crazy Neighbor to <laughs> really? playing a Marvel. Yeah, no. Unless he could figure out some way to, to have monetary wagers involved, he wouldn't play it. That's a decent point. I yeah. understand that. All right. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your actual game though that you got. Or oh, I get to go got. first. Yeah, usually, you go do, first. Do you I usually go, go first? first? I don't know. Do I? You usually go first. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of recommendals. You're thinking All right. of recommendals. I go first. Well, then I will go first. Now I mentioned Short this. Turn. I mentioned this with Dan last week, but I didn't really show it off or talk about it much. Um, and so I'm going to do that more now. All right. Yeah. Shards okay, cool. of Infinity. Shards Sh of Infinity. Shards of Infinity. Um, <laughs> let's see, I'll bring it up on the screen in a second. But uh, this is the game from that dude. What is the... Uh, he's a pro Magic the Gathering player. Oh, cool. And his name is... Hold on. So he still lives at home is what you're saying. He, he very well might... <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. That was mean and, and hilarious, but it's mean. Justin Gary, I think, is his name. I'm not 100% okay. sure on that. It doesn't matter, really. But uh, the people who worked on this game had their hands in things like uh, the tabletop uh, similar similar game, Ascension, which is huge and has tons of expansions. These are deck-building games, and uh, they uh, are very cool. I like them generally, but I've never been great at them. This game is actually getting me to a point where I think, feel like I can actually really compete with one of these. And um, another one is Star Realms. That's a fantastic deck building game. Again, these all kind of have a very common sort of uh, way of working. You lay out a bunch of cards on your turn, and on that turn, those cards might be resource cards. And these resource cards will buy cards that are laid out at the top that you can afford. Like, okay, well, I have three resource cards, so I can afford this, this one. And that one's going to do a particular thing when I either play it right now or it comes up later in my deck. Which is an important note because if you play these before, most of the time they just go back into your deck and you hope you deal them again. 
Mm -hmm. um, in this game, it has a quick play option for some cards, and it's indicated by a little like a little red ring around their oh, right. thing. And that allows you to play them right away yeah. as opposed to... Yeah. Which, can, which can be very strategic, because some of the cards will be like, if you play a certain kind of card this round, we'll give you an extra bunch of this or whatever. So there's mm -hmm. lots of reasons why that's a thing. And then sometimes you don't want to do that. You want to put it in the deck uh, for a, com a better combo later or whatever. But... Um, I really like deck builders. I don't like CCGs because I don't like collecting cards and hoping my pack opens and there's something in there yeah. I want. That's I know right. that's a thing people like. It's too gambly for me. It's not my jam. Totally. Uh, plus, it's ex it gets expensive. Like yeah, it gets trying to buy expensive. all the right cards you want. Yeah. Right. That's why I like that mode in Hearthstone that is just that Battlegrounds thing where you just, I mean, the more cards you buy, the better you, you chance you have because you can draft more. But sure. that game lets you play pretty fairly without having to worry about it. Um, this is a lot like that in a lot of ways. And... Uh, this is, has both offline and online play. The offline play is uh, have th has three settings for the AI. Um, you can have up to four people play it, so you can add three other AIs, or you can do pass and play with somebody in the same room with your phone if you mm -hmm. want. Oh, or cool. um, you can pl uh, play it online. And PC version, same thing. So I like this so much, I bought this twice. I bought it on my phone, which also runs mm -hmm. great on an iPad Pro. Perfect format for that. I'm sure, yeah. It's I'm really sure it's good. Nice You'll table size. You would love yeah. that. It's very cool. And then um, on the PC, uh, it's just on Steam. And so I got that version of it. They don't have a Mac port, which bugs me, because I'd love to be able to just kind of have that in the mm -hmm. background when I'm on calls and stuff with people. Um, <laughs> turn down the volume and just play. But uh, it is very, very good. Again, Shards of Infinity, there's, in terms of, you know, um, it's, it's a pretty game. Like, it's well presented. It's nice artwork, like all of that. You're not going to get crazy animations the way you do in hearthstone or something it's it's pretty basic you know sure. lay out the cards pick your cards do a thing they don't get too snazzy with that but it's okay the the fun of the game is is really there and it feels just like i mean they have a desktop or a desktop a, a tabletop equivalent to this game so i like like ascension it's you know people are playing this on tabletop this just happens to be the digital version of it and i really like it and i owe dan a huge thanks for pushing me in this direction um, and ended up just loving this game. So again, that's Shards of Infinity. If you want to try one that's free to get a taste of what I'm talking about, that game would be Star Realms, which is a sci-fi version of this, sort of, of this kind of game. Um, it's even less flashier than this, but it's you'll get the right idea, and that game is free to pick up and play and is available on iOS, Android, and PC as well. This uh, is cool. Yeah. Really cool. And it's only, uh, I want to say it's 8 bucks on Steam and maybe the same price... It's not cheap on iOS, but I was, I'm I'm fine paying a premium for a game that isn't full of ads and garbage. So mm -hmm. I want to support right. these developers, and I did, and I like it, and I bought it in both places, and it's very good. I want to, nice. and there's all that's the other thing. There's always somebody online to play with. I've never had a game sit forever waiting for a match. I always get in, and I'm I'm winning about as much as I lose. Okay. Oh, that's good. Let's well, and plus it's you know new enough that people are still figuring out, and so you probably get matched up with people who are about the same skill level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. It's very good. Very cool. Shards of Infinity, available now, multiple platforms. Check it out. See if you like it, like I do. All right, Brian, tell me about cool. your thing. I will tell you about my thing first. I will tell you that I completed, at least finished, what I think is the main game of uh, Super Hot VR. Mm -hmm. That is, it, it, admittedly, it's the first game I bought on my Quest, Oculus Quest. Yeah. But it is my favorite thing that I've ever played on a VR thing ever oh wow i'm it very happy so to good. hear that just the just the like you know slowly moving to grab the gun out of this guy's hand while you dodge the bullet coming from the other side it's like and it's a friggin' workout you wouldn't think it would be a workout but there's a lot of like core balancing and stuff that you're doing and ducking Do, and doing like a weird game of twister kind of in a way kind of yeah. like the yoga slow yoga poses mm -hmm. but then there are times where you're like moving really quick mm -hmm. yeah um, it is really something else and they, they figured out how to take the a bullet time mechanic and just yeah. take it into a new place it feels so fresh and new it's just really cool for sure yeah. and uh, wrath 86 yes beat saber is on quest and that'll probably be my next purchase is uh, beat saber yeah beat saber is a must but, have at some point that is not the, the game I'm, or the thing I'm going to be talking about. And it is a game that I'm going to be talking about here for your Android or iOS device. Uh, I'm so glad I get to beat you to this, Scott, because it's a developer that we both love. That, that any time this developer comes out with a new game, you and I always get it. This is from Tiny Touch Tales. It's a brand new game called Maze Machina. Oh, okay. And uh, it is as 
as fun as anything else that I've ever played uh, by these guys. Um, it's kind of a combination of that of the um, the dungeon, the one when, when, you know we have the mouse and you're you know going picking up the the sword and then you can attack them for however much mm -hmm. as long as you have more damage points and stuff like that and then they die and sure. then you get a potion and it heals you. Sure. Um, it's a it's like a combination of that and that game threes from a few years ago that was oh, super. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, Threes yeah, was great. Yeah. What a cool Threes game. was great where you like, you know, you swipe up, left, down, right mm -hmm. to combine the numbers that match to make to double them up and things like that. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the same thing. You're just doing it with your main character, who happens also to be a mouse, maybe mm -hmm. even the same mouse from mm -hmm. the other game. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a bunch of robots. And depending on what uh square you step on, um, you have a different thing. So uh in the one I'm playing right now. I've got a bow and arrow, but if I move off that space, the next space is a set of brass knuckles. Mm. And the brass knuckles will knock any robot. Uh, if I swipe in that direction, I've got a robot um, uh, vertically or horizontally, then swiping would knock that robot onto another square. If I get the dagger, then it'll destroy a robot on any square that's adjacent to me if I swipe that direction. Sure. Um, the object on each level little four by four grid object on each level is to get the key and then get back to the space that lets you get out and do it by you know uh, swiping around but here's the problem as you're swiping you're not only moving your character that direction you're moving all of the robots that direction as well mm. so it's not just a matter of saying "Ooh, i want to go get the sword and take that guy out you've got to say okay if i get the sword i'm going in that direction he's also going to go in that same direction then i need to bring him back this way and then swipe that way to get him to a side where i can swipe the sword at him hmm. it's it really is a lot of thinking and and you've got stamina each step you take takes stamina and so every once in a while you might want to get food um to re-up your stamina and every time you complete a level at least for the first several levels i'm still i may be eight nine ten levels in um they introduce a new a new thing on a panel uh, so far every level so now this time they've added a what looks like a an ice ball mm -hmm. and when you land on the ice ball space and swipe in a direction it throws an ice ball onto a square two away from you that if you or an enemy step into they're instantly frozen for that a sounds, turn that <laughs> sounds great so, this is so this is so great it's it's just you know it's everything that you love from these guys they, they manage to do it you know beautifully every single time i'm into it i want yeah. I think I desire it, like, yeah. like now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can get it now. It is a dollar ninety nine. But you know what? It's it's worth it. Worth, worth every it. penny. Buck ninety nine, always worth it. No problem. Yeah, happy exactly. to pay that for these guys. Uh, give the name one more time. Maze Machina. M A C H I N A. Maze is spelled like the thing, you, like the labyrinth, and not like the corn. Okay, interesting. And this is not a. Uh... Not an Apple Arcade game. Total Not premium Apple Arcade game. game. Right. Yep, you pay once, you're done with it, and you don't need to pay every month for it. You know, it's you've got it. You own it. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. Own it. Ooh, it looks good too. It does. Well, all their games, they always, they you know, they know how to do this animation style that is just so simple and infectious and charming and awesome. I didn't know this was out. It just came out two days ago. Of course, I'm buying this. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they, I, I mean, it's almost like you want to subscribe to Tiny Touch Tales. And yeah, say, yes. Just automatically put it on my phone as soon as it's made. Yeah, I mean, they had me at Card Crawl. They had me at um, yeah. Card Thief. Those are two, still two of my favorite things. That Miracle Merchant thing, so good. All their games are mm. good. They're good. All they right, just, well, they know a... how to craft. They know how to craft uh, craft good games that are that are a lot deceptively deep for how simple they look. Yeah, people are going to love this. If you like steampunk aesthetics or whatever, oh, yeah. you're going to love this. Yeah. This looks really neat. All right, you sold me. I'm good. There you go. You get it. Uh, well, guy, there you go. Arnold Rowers is the guy behind all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a dude, right? Just a dude? It's a dude. Maze Machina, Miracle Merchant, Card Thief, Enyo, Card Crawl. And uh, They're all this really guy just good. knows how to create brilliant games. Yeah, the game. I mean, Card Crawl still amazing. Still fun to play. Still fun to play. Yeah, yep. it holds up, man. A lot of games lose that shine on on mobile but that game does not i'll bet this one is just nope. as good 
This was just as good. There you go. Get all right. Buck 99 worth every, worth all 199 pennies. I like everything about this. Yep. All right. Well, now this. Wait, well, this. And you can always follow me on Twitter. All right. Twitter questions. You guys submitted them. We're here to uh, talk about them. For example, this one from Laundry Scent. He says, what exotic animal would you be curious to eat? <laughs> sugar glider. Mm. Does it really taste like sugar? Are they a sweet <laughs> meat? No, um, I don't know. What exotic animal would I like to eat? Well, what, uh, define I don't exotic, think of animals too. that way. Like, I don't think of, like, I sure would like to taste giraffe. Mm. I would love to know what a giraffe tastes like. I would do a panther. If, if it died for other reasons and we had to... Th- Kill it. it had to die no matter what. Then I'll eat it. I don't want to kill it to eat it. But um, let's say there was a panther hit by a bus, and they're like, "Well, we don't want this meat to go away." Scott, do you want some of this meat? I'd probably have a little panther meat. I'd try that. Have you that. ever eaten anything in the cat family? No, no. I can't imagine it's very good, or else we'd be eating cats. <laughs> I mean, probably you're right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we don't it... even hear about other cultures eating cats, right? I mean, I don't know. Does anyone eat a cat like a like a wild cat, or is it? I mean, it can't be the worst thing ever. Ko- <laughs> koala. There's only like one left, Fastidious. Oh, I know. That's like uh, too soon. Too soon. Koala. Um, uh, what would you do? What would you try? I would try... Uh, I hear camel's good. I do hear that. Really? Yeah. Camel, that's camel that's burgers. That's the thing that I... Uh, it seems weird, right? I, but apparently camel yeah. burgers are like straight up delicious, like really good. Huh. Yeah. Um... Peacock, I think. Oh, go for the bird. All right. Just go for the bird. Go for the bird. <laughs> you know what? I, I think that, you know, the noise they make and everything, the world could do with a couple less peacocks. I'd like to try peacock and see if it just tastes like fancy chicken. Uh, okay. I'm going to give you an example of some cat meat usage. Oh, meat no. Usage. Here we go. Right. Uh, nine countries that eat cats. Oh, um, okay. Let's see. The Chinese government actually poo poos on it people still eat cats in china Ooh, i was gonna say can i guess some of the other ones uh yeah let's see um let's find the full list here we go give me give me an idea who, right, where you i'm think. gonna guess south korea uh incorrect Bzzz. they eat dogs I'm guess... no cats okay i'm gonna guess uh north korea uh that's a great question they don't list them but they may not have the data you know what i mean okay. it's so shut down right. who knows they're probably eating each other for all we know i'm gonna say malaysia uh close taiwan okay Taiwan, all right. Taiwan yeah, was, lets you do I it. I might have gotten there, yeah. <laughs> there is one, I'll tell you this, there's one state in the USA where people eat a ton of cats. What state do you think that is? Really? Yep. Um, well, I'm going to say Alaska would make the most sense. I'm going to say you're close in the direction to north. <laughs> you're to north. Gotcha. Hawaii? Correct. In Hawaii, really? there are a bunch of people. It's like a... It's like a um, little cat po- poke is culture. what they're having down there. <laughs> Put them on a stick. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I had weird stuff in Mississippi. I had um, oh, what did I have? I had squirrel. I had alligator. I guess it might be. It might be. You know, the if there's some Asian countries where it's where they're eaten, then there's an Asian population, of course, in Hawaii. So people would move there and they would just bring their cultures with them. Yeah, and maybe the polynesian thing well I, whatever like people bring stuff there like spam and then it becomes a national pastime over there or a state past pastime being spam. <laughs> tanner says there are a shit ton of cats in hawaii so it's really more like a uh oh, yeah but there's it? also just... chickens that are on the just running around the side of the road i'd much rather eat the chicken thank you very much <laughs> i would too if you're just gonna yeah. eat the overgrown population animal why start with cats i wouldn't right if you eat the chickens then some of the cats will starve i feel like cats are going to have too much hair in them except for those those uh uh not siamese what are they called the uh, the skin the skin ones the naked ones oh like this uh, sphinx 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 cats cats. those those i wouldn't i'd be more inclined to eat one of those because you don't have to de-hair the thing because the hair's everywhere man cat hair i don't want to eat no cat hair (laughs) cats don't even want to eat cat hair ain't nobody got time for that I know. Yeah. All right, let's get to let's get to another question. Oh, it does Horrible say, question. It does say this uh, back in the day when there was what was wartime uh, or yeah. s- extreme poverty in some places, people would resort to eating cats. There you go. Move along. Moving along. How about this one? This is from. <laughs> uh, where is it? This is from Tanner Goodman. If you had okay. to be a Las Vegas street performer, what would you do? 
If you had to be one, Brian, what would you do? If I had to be a Las Vegas street performer. You uh, already you already look. If someone painted you silver and put you in a suit, you that, already looked like that, that, that really guy. It's really funny that, that, that that's the one you'd go to because I almost think that that's what I would do. I yeah. would get like a, um, a weird futuristic like Borg, Mad Max steampunky kind of outfit yeah and then i would just freeze like one of those uh statues out there and wait for you know some bumble dork from uh uh <laughs> greenbow alabama to walk by and i go bah and make them, <laughs> make them drop their licorice bits i always am impressed with those those uh air airbrush guys they always blow my mind oh yeah so i feel like i might do that it's messy though things uh, it's those- messy and uh I mean, a lot of them have breathers. I think almost all of them have breathers, but still, like, uh, uh, you've got to be still getting bad stuff in your system. Well, how about that nun we saw two years ago that had her boobs hanging out? The topless nun? Yeah, the topless yeah. nun. That was weird. Didn't like that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, I, I, shame. <laughs> mine, would, shame. <laughs> mine would be, like, art-related in some way. Like, uh, sure. I always think it'd be yeah, cool car- to watch. Caricature artist, maybe. Yeah, or, or even, like... I always want to watch a guy sit down with a hunk of wood and make something cool out of the wood. You know? Like, whittle it yeah. down to a rad little sculpture and give it to you. I think, But I think Tanner wants to know, like, if we had to go there now. Oh. Um, Who would I would, aside, so be the impression guy. But I'd only do impressions of people that the average Las Vegas visitor wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you just do... Uh... Here's, here's my friend Patrick. Oh, this is a really, really uh, beautiful day on Fremont Street. Uh, oh, how's that one, right? <laughs> okay, now here's James from Same Sex Mary. James from Same Sex Mary, exactly. Yeah. Yes. You can hear him down the street. At the- <laughs> your uh, your kind of whiny Trump thing you did the other day, you could do that, put oh, yeah. a big old uh, toupee <laughs> on. That. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that would be great. Oh, yeah, like do the whole like Trump on as a street performer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? People, people walking down the street. <laughs> Looking for. <laughs> oh, it's, my, it's one of my favorite impressions you do, but it, man, it curls my milk. <laughs> the zip line. Zip line doesn't go as fast as it used to anymore. EPA wants to shut down. We're going to speed up the zip line. <laughs> and they did do a thing that I saw a post today. New York or the Washington Post has a story about how they are trying to get more potatoes. Uh, and starchy things in kids' food for schools and less fruit and vegetables. So that seems like a Trumpy thing to do, doesn't it? Oh, it totally does. Yeah, yeah why not? Exactly. Get some fries By the way, burgers. I sent you, and, and you know, we we reacted to it, but I share it with the uh, the audience now. Yeah. Uh, we talked about hotels and resort fees. How like, you know, even the plaza. Every 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 hotel in Nevada charges you between twenty and thirty dollars a night on top of their rate uh, to stay there. Yeah. I found an article that shows that Donald Trump makes seventy-four thousand one hundred dollars from hotel resort fees every day. Every day. <laughs> every day, so nearly seventy-five thousand dollars in resort fees it's, in Trump's pocket. It's like it's kind of a giant scam that comes from a legit response to a thing. You and I talked about this. We don't have to get into it here, but yeah. it's a kind of a fascinating, weird. It thing. is, you know, and there's there's. There's reasons for it, and I kind of understand the reasoning because you know when you deal with Priceline, Priceline takes a big chunk of of the money from the hotel. Um, they've got to make their money too, commission, and um, this is a way that the hotel can say, okay, well we'll take that commission back in the form of uh, resort fees. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you there was an, uh, an interview with the head of MGM Properties talking about resort fees last year, and um, he said, well, you know, we see, we hear from our customers. Um, some folks, of course, don't like resort fees. And they'll, you know, they'll argue with us at our front desk about them. But some people really like the resort fees because they're tired of getting nickel and, dime on, nickel and dimed on the things that they want. Uh-huh. I don't think anybody's saying, nope. please give me that USA Today that uh, is basically just going to sit in front of my hotel room door for the next four days. Yeah, or guaranteed. let me go to your horrible hot tub and uh, pool. <laughs> Uh, area where the paint is chipping off the walls and there's cigarette butts floating in the in the a hundred percent correct <laughs> nobody nobody's saying oh, thank you for doing resort fees yeah you've, man you've really you know i come here because of the resort fees you guys are the best because because i would have bought all 12 of these amenities that you offer as part of the resort fee and now i can make one blanket purchase for them all yeah it sucks <laughs> 
Because they already nickel and dime you and everything else anyway. It's not like that went yeah, away. Exactly. It's exactly. not. It's. It's. I don't know. It's one of those things so, that's gotten out of hand. fees are part of life, but they. But it's a part of life that sucks. Yeah. Anyway, they could have gone a different way. Well done, Hotels.com or whoever yeah. screwed that up. Yeah. Uh, moving on to this question from. Oh, we got a. Uh, did we get a new one in? Hold on. I can't. This thing's not refreshing the way it usually does. Oh, here we go. Um, people tell me people tell me all the time i don't know where i'm going with that exit uh, <laughs> never mind you know what let's move on <laughs> i was gonna try and do a whole trump thing about how we, how people tell them all the time that they love resort business. yeah i'm sure that if someone questioned them about it they would do it all right if you could bring back oh this is peter fisher he's always good for a laugh here. yeah johnny on the spot he says if you could bring back an old lucas arts game series with a modern update what would it be uh, did you ever play like? Um, I mean, they've done that I with a lot of the these. One with the skeleton, the 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 um, that one was one I always wanted oh, to play. And I never so got good. Around and there is a, there is a uh, remaster of that. That there that's is done. yeah, a modern take. What's it called? Um, I can't think of it. What's it called? Oh my gosh, I can't think of the name of the game. Grim, Grim Fandango. Fandango. Yeah, yeah. 1999, amazing game incredible game uh that's everything i heard about that was that it was amazing yeah. king's quest wasn't lucas arts right uh no but it, that would have been one of the sierra ones i think yeah uh, also yeah. good though very good oh they did the um again i could begin this wrong the sam and max series right and the, the right no, that, that was were they there? hold on who was that nope that was the that's what turned into telltale but that would have been right well wasn't that's that right, them, they though? did that whole poker game wait who did that now i'm annoyed uh, Sam and Max, original. Let me look this up because I'm, I'm looking. Curious. I'm looking to see which ones of these I played. Oh, Loom! Oh my God, I forgot about Loom. Loom was great. 1990. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Uh, 97 to 98. Sam and Max. Zubba zubba zubba. These were made by. Uh, like oh, created by Steve Purcell. Um. Oh, here we go. Sam and Max hit the road was. Released by Lucas Art Lucas Arts during the company's adventure games era. I loved. Uh, oh, I, there I it totally is, yeah. played this. You're totally right. Sam and Max at the road. Yep. Yep. That was a great game. Uh, someone in the but, chat but, uh, just said. Now that uh, I've seen, now that I've been reminded of Loom, I think I might say Loom. Loom is cool. That was great. Yeah. Uh, I really like. Uh, I know this isn't an adventure game, but Tie Fighter is amazing, and mm -hmm. Lucas Arts did that back in the day. And if they made a modern Tie Fighter, I would lose my mind because. Oh, yeah. TIE Dark Fighter Forces. was incredible. Dark Forces I played the crap out of. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Rishi B. Kay. Here's a good one for you. Can uh, You can only talk in the lyrics of one song of your choice for the rest of your life. Which song do you pick? Ooh. Um, Bare Naked Ladies and that song where they say everything. Yeah, right? The one week? Yeah. So you can put those lyrics in any order or do you have to... Oh, I see. I would I would assume yeah. you could jumble it any way you wanted, right? Because you just need the words. I would assume. Yeah, because I was thinking either um, uh, "It's the End of the World as We Know It" <laughs> by REM or uh, "Sympathy for the Devil" by the Rolling Stones. I can see you walking around the going, fires again. See you yeah. walking around the street going, "It's the end." Uh, you don't even have to sing it. You just say, "It's the end of the world as we know it," and I feel fine. People are going to think you're nuts. Right. Well, I'll be going through. Uh, Lester Bangs, Lenny Bruce. Uh, oh, right. Those are bunch that I forgot about those. All right. You could, yeah. there's, oh, that's decent. So you could have a yeah. decent dictionary from that because I think that's the goal. You want a very chatty song that you could then just use the words at will. 6 a.m., don't get caught in foreign towers. <laughs> yep. Yep. No one would uh, think you're crazy. You'd be fine. Jeez. What? I mean, it's, you know, you'd pick a song. You wouldn't pick Axel F. You'd mm. pick a song that has the most lyrics that can be fit into a song. We didn't start the fire as a good one, but you'd just be. Uh, you just be able to talk history with folks. Hmm. <laughs> JFK like blown away. What else do I have to say? <laughs> uh, I like, it. yeah, give it your own emphasis so it doesn't sound like the song. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what. I'd probably the Bare Naked Lady song. Because yeah, then I could one. say it's been one week a lot. Or uh, uh, that uh, Blues Traveler song, Hook. Oh. Suck it in, suck it in, suck it in. If you're in Tintin or in Berlin, make a desperate move or else you'll win. Or yep. then begin to see what you're doing to me. This MTV is not for free. It's anyway. See? Exactly. I could go, you I know, could, I could go on. You and could on go and on. on. You could go on. Uh, what if we could do a different song every day so I could do Comfortably Numb on a Day I'm Tired? Um, <laughs> you know. There you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. Things like right. that. I'd do that. Now, All right. How about today, this? Today, as somebody in the chat room said, you'd, do, you'd be doing Sunrise Sunset. 
<laughs> oh, see, there you go. Oh, Eminem yep. has oh, an Eminem song would be good because he just spouts it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Rap God, his song Rap God song, or Rap God had 1,560 words. Didn't he just release a new single today? I think it happened today. Hmm. Everyone was losing their mind about it. It's supposed to be good. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it was I saw he was trending. I didn't see. I haven't listened to the song yet. I like that Eminem boy. He's a good I've boy. Been, I've been uh working on my hundred and ten thousand track iTunes library to make it so that I can move it out, delete, and then move it back in, re import it fresh because it's breaking everything uh Apple related. It's probably a database overload thing, right? Like whatever their database it's, is to track. It that. was no, it's a um it's something that was caused by a damaged file yeah. a while back yeah. and uh because of that anytime i sync i get it duplicates all of my smart playlists and i can delete all of my smart playlists and sync and it'll put all of them back in and put all of the ones duplicated oh. that i deleted back in and then duplicate them again it's horrible Oof. Oof. that is horrible so i'm i basically but here's the thing there's again this is probably more this this is pen talk bob yeah more pen talk uh, bob get used to it the grouping id3 tag has been split as of id3 version 3 so half of my songs have the original artist because i keep them in the grouping tag half of them have them in the v tag oh, no. v2 tag half of them have them in the new work tag which is what the v3 now did with all the ones that were in v2 Ugh. so i've got to copy all those out into yet another tag and then i'll copy them back and Wow, that's a bunch of work. Hundred and how many thousand again? Hundred and ten thousand songs. That's nuts. Sixty thousand of which are covers or something like that. It's you yeah. could start your own streaming music service if you had the rights to it. <laughs> I could, right? Yeah. yeah, you have enough music that you. I mean, have you right. have you ever checked to see how long that uh, a continuous running time would be for every song you have? Like how long um, that total time would be? That'd no, be and I step. can't do it right now because it's going through a script that's that's doing the copying and pasting. When you're um, done with this. That would be a fun stat to say. That's funny. This will go for the, 20 the years. The it's currently whatever. working on um, is a band called Opium Jukebox that does some really cool covers of Tainted Love. Um, and it's off of an album called Music to Download Download Pornography By. Oh, great. <laughs> Very good, Opium Jukebox. It's a great album. Good job, anyway. guys. Yeah. I'd be really curious about that continuous yeah, running I'll time. Tell you, I'll tell you that one as soon as I'm done with this because it's weeks. Oh, it's got to be. <laughs> it may even be years. Yeah, may even be years. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's amazing. All right. Uh, here's an interesting question. Angel Ridge Farm says, uh, I had a son that was visually impaired. Would you rather be blind or deaf? And why? Mm. Blind or deaf. So one or the other. Mm. I would rather be deaf than blind mm. um, because my world is so visual. It's very mm. auditory too, but um, of the two, I think I'm going to go deaf if I had Yeah, to. I probably would lean deaf over blind. Um for the same reason even though it means i never hear my hundred and ten thousand songs again <laughs> yeah in fact they could be playing and you would never know you just hear vibration. probably i probably have to stop podcasting yeah you'd be out <laughs> actually that's the other thing is either way i guess i could still podcast with hearing i would need some help and i would have you know kim down here setting everything up and i but i just right. need to be on a microphone so i suppose that's the thing i could still do but man either one like i my heart heart goes out to anybody who has to deal with any of that sort of loss um, especially if you've had it, like part of me is like, it's okay. You know, somebody who's born blind or deaf, part of me is relieved for them because they don't have to know what it's they, like not to have it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't want them to be that way, but you know what I mean? No, like, but I know, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, far, far better to never have it than to have it and have it taken away from you. Yes. As the bard said, no, I don't, I don't know. It sounds like <laughs> it's that old better phrase. Better to have seen than lost than never. They were lost no, a scene at all. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one from Roy Ward, who uh, wrote in, says, Favorite way to spend time in a blizzard when the power goes out. Greetings from snowy Newfoundland, Canada. And, and this picture he posted is insane. Um, in fact, I'll link it to you. The, uh, my answer is to play, you should play a blizzard game. You should play a video game by Blizzard Entertainment. Play World of Warcraft. Read the question. Read the question again. Did I not do it right? Read the question. Favorite again. way to spend. Oh, you didn't say anything about a game, did he? Favorite way he to said, spend. He said with the powers out. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. That's what I said. Oh, with the power, because you can't play video games without the power. Right, right. Damn it. <laughs> then the answer is different. Here's the new answer. Then you play the you play uh, 
uh, Warcraft Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> Get some candles out, play Warcraft Monopoly, which exists. That's the thing you can do. Uh, I don't know. Go play pfft, cock and balls. Play cock and balls. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't either. Why is that in there, chat room? You're killing me today. <laughs> what would you do when when something like yeah, this happens? Yeah, definitely. I mean, board games is absolutely the answer uh, mm. to this. Is uh, You play a board game. You know, you can't watch TV. You can't play video games. You can't... Uh, um, and, you know, your your phone and your tablet and your uh, Switch will still have a little bit of power. So get a little use out of those. But, you know. Unless... For, for a while, my kids were convinced because I think I helped. I perpetuated this lie. I think I was teasing them, but they think that you can't use a toilet when the power's out. And the, <laughs> the answer is, you can totally use a toilet when the power's out. And you can uh, absolutely use a toilet when the power. Then please do. Yeah, use please the do. Toilet. So there was a lot of me running around going, "Why isn't this toilet flush?" Well, you said it didn't. It wouldn't go without the. Oh, uh, don't tell your mother. Yeah, no, that was a lie. I made it up. Cl flush. Just can't use the part of the bidet that heats the water. Now, if things are backed up and there's no working water. When it's brown, flush it down. Sure. If it's yellow, let it mellow. That's the old rule. Sure. Did you guys ever say that when you were younger? Uh, you... If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Yeah, that's the actual proper that's order. That's the phrase. Yeah. That is the, the phrase we learned. Yeah. <laughs> if it's blue, what's the matter with you? If it's, <laughs> if it's green, it's probably your spleen. Uh, <laughs> if it's white, yeah, that or... ain't right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, or you could go outside and uh, have a snowball fight. Yeah, that sounds all right. Electricity for that. Yeah, just try to stay warm. Don't uh, don't eat each other. That kind of stuff. Yeah. All right, we'll do one more of these. How about? Uh, <laughs> will both of you? Brad Bar Barber wants to know. Will both of you commit to eating a ten milligram edible in Vegas? Come on, all the cool kids are doing it. So a little peer pressure from Brad. Sure. Uh, uh, I will not commit to it, but I will say that I'm considering. I don't know if it'll be a full 10 milligrams. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm tempted to just, like, bite the leg off a gummy bear just to see. Just to, <laughs> like, on a Friday, like, Friday night after the wedding, go go back to the hotel, know that I'm not getting up the crack of dawn the next day. Sure. Bite one leg off, go, hmm, how's this feel? And then that's it. I might okay. do that. I might do that. Um, I can't, I can't make that commitment, obviously, because uh, no matter what state I'm in, it's still... Uh, federally illegal and could cost Tina her credentials. Yeah, because so, Tina's with you, and even if she's not with you, I wouldn't take that risk either if I were you. Yep, exactly. Um, so. I don't have that risk. However, I, this is a good question. I'm podcasting yeah. today in Salt Lake City, Utah. Beautiful day today. It's sunny. Uh, birds sure. everywhere. A little cold, but nice. I don't know why I'm telling you that. <laughs> I don't know. I can't wait to see where this is going. What if I <laughs> eat those birds? <laughs> if I uh, if if I say on the what air, those oh, birds would you like to eat? If I say on the air, ooh, when I'm in Vegas, I'm going to eat the leg off a pot of gummy, gummy bear. Am I violating yeah. something by saying that? I don't know. No, because you're going to a place where it's legal. So it'd be okay. it'd be bad if you said, and I'm going to get as many of those. THC gummy bears as I can and ship them back in my suitcase. Right. So it's it's like when uh, Snoop Dogg goes on some talk show and just says, I love weed. He's not, you yeah. can't rush in there and go, all right, that's it. You're arrested for, you know, <laughs> right. he can say exactly. it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I get it now. And I'm I don't just, think, uh, and, and, you know, as they point out, I mean, you know, you can say anything. They're not going to arrest you unless they catch you with uh, a suitcase full of THC gummy bears. Oh yeah, I'm not bringing them anywhere. I would eat a yeah. sing. I would get a bear on the strip. If, if yeah. they'll let me just get a a bear, I'll do it. Sure. Um, oh, that reminds me, by the way. Yeah. For Monday's giveaway Ooh. for uh, Babel Royale, I actually do have a prize package from the Canna World Market. Ooh. The uh, uh, from Loveland, Colorado. Lovely Loveland, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's all CBD stuff. It's a uh, CBD lip balm. Oh. And a couple CBD um, honey candies. What does really the lip good. balm do for you? What does that do? It Just... does whatever CBD is supposed to do for you, like mellow you out. Oh, really? Calm you. Yeah. I saw a video of a dog who uh, ate a bunch of CBD lotion by accident. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. dog was... It's not supposed to make you stoned, but that dog was stoned. He looked, really? He was jacked huh. up, dude. Just... Wow. bumping into stuff and falling on his back and looking up weird and then getting up again i was like you're worried about him like you can't let a dog eat that you're gonna die or something oh tanner says it absorbs it absorbs into your blood faster on your lips is that is that true oh. 
Did you hear? Okay. Uh, did you hear this? A minute this? on your lips, straight to your fingertips. This is what I'm about to say is going to make some people glad that we're putting this PM edition under the paywall. <laughs> right, okay. Great but I have to it. get it out. I heard the other day, I don't know if there's any truth to this, but there's some rumor floating around. I guess I haven't looked it up, so I don't know. Okay. But somebody says that men... If they dip their testes into something with like flavor in it, that they can taste it. Like the minute you do it, almost like you got you got flavor nerves, like tongue nerves on your balls. And like if you went uh -huh. over to a bucket of chicken and just went brat and sat them in there, you would go mm, chicken. <laughs> do you think that's true? I think this is I think this is a way to make gullible people stick their <laughs> nards into Red Bull. Is what I think it is. I think that's exactly what. <laughs> Okay, I really yeah. oughta. I really oughta search for it. Uh, let me see. Can <laughs> I taste? Well, of course, God. Why do you think they call it a tea bag? Testicles. Okay. Can you taste things with your testicles? Science says testicles and anuses have taste receptors. Really? What? Uh, can you really taste? Okay, here's the Reddit. Not Reddit. Um, here. Okay, here we go. Uh, I've been seeing posts. Oh, someone said, can you taste your underwear? No. <laughs> then no is what they say. <laughs> yeah, good point. Oh, no, exactly. I don't want to think about it. Ugh. Yeah. All right. It doesn't work. Someone's fooling That's somebody. Funny. It's dumb. All right. See, for, for a dollar <laughs> a month. <laughs> One measly dollar a month, you, you guys. Want stuff like this. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, we'll be back next week, not live on this channel and not live at all and not in the main feed. But for those who belly up to the bar between now and then, you'll get it. You'll get it because it'll totally. be on the Patreon. Yep. It'll be automatic, too, which is nice because you just the minute you sign up, you're, you're eligible and you'll just get it on the site. Um, as to how it'll work with the RSS feeds and all that stuff, I will get that all worked out before next Friday. But. Cool. And and you know what, uh, you know, if you're a patron, you'll get uh, you'll get information about it. You'll get uh, a note as to where it's going to be. So yeah, and the rest of the week, yeah. all normal, all good. Monday through Thursday, just like the show started in exactly. 2011. It's just the same. It hasn't changed. We're doing that. That'll never change. Okay, we're never getting rid of that. Exactly. All right, uh, that is going to do it. Uh, don't forget, oh, that website. If you're looking to do the patron thing, is uh, Patreon.com/tms. Patreon.com/tms. Please head on over there and take advantage of it. If you have questions about it, themorningstream at gmail.com will get to us and we can answer those. Or you can visit the site at frogpants.com slash TMS. That's it for us. Why don't you play a song now? Will do. I was smart and I uh, copied out the song that uh, that we have for today's show before I started doing all this garbage with my uh, Apple Music library. Uh, this one comes to us a recommendation from the Matt Cast man himself, Adam Christensen. It says, hey, Brian, heard about this version recently on This American Life, and I just enjoyed it. Thought it might be fun to play on the show. Signed, Adam. You know, I don't know. We should, we should also, also see if uh, Adam's going to make it out to Vegas. He's made it out to, to Yeah, he loves going. I bet he would if, he uh, you know what, if while you you're talking, I'm going to reach out right now and ask. I'll, I'll do a cool. little uh, joint uh, private message with you and me. Do and a him. joint? Yeah, I'll do a joint. And you then... said it on online, Scott. You said oh, you're no. doing a joint. The SWAT team is on its way. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Uh, all right. This is a cover of the Eagles song Desperado. Everybody's thinking of that episode of Seinfeld now. Uh, performed by Lucy Wainwright Roach and Susie Roach. Yeah, Lucy Wainwright Roach is the sister of, uh, of uh, what's his face, Wainwright? <laughs> Rufus Wainwright and the, the daughter of... Loudon Rain, Wayne, Wayne Wright. Anyway, great musical family. And the Roaches, uh, no slouches either. The uh, musical family there as well. Um, this is uh, from an album that I don't have in front of me, but it's an album that's got a lot of covers on it, and it's really good. They've also got a cover on there of Landslide. That's awesome. Oh, I love Landslide covers. Good. Yeah. So uh, here's Desperado by Lucy Wainwright Roach and Susie Roach for Adam Christian. All right. See you guys on Film Sack. There will be Dungeons and, of course, TMS on Monday. See you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. What kind of a deal? You know, they could do like a citizen's arrest for my pot talk. That's right, for your pot pot talk. Yeah.